part six. I'm kind of anticipating maybe a 14 to 15 part series. When I covered Peach last time, I pointed out the leggings and wanted to know the reason for that. I went to multiple wikis and found nothing. But one was egregious in its content. It pointed out the leggings, but said they change color based on what dress she's wearing. And then says she has cryokinesis when she grabs a ice flower. So, there was so much wrong with this wiki. It was embarrassing. One, it reeks of someone who has never played a Mario game. The color of Mario and the rest of the cast. Clothes change based on the power-ups that they pick up. Two, cryokinesis is not a thing in the Mario games. It's like saying a frost mage in the World of Warcraft, or pick your favorite fantasy world, are all psychics. There's more wrong with it, but those two stood out to me. They used a different genre altogether as an explanation or origin for their abilities. The wiki is an embarrassment and thankfully not officially canon. Sorry about the rant, but it was just so egregious I felt like saying something. Anyways, I never found anything about the leggings, but if I were to guess, it's partly due to it being an international release. And during the obstacle course, her dress does flutter up and you can see all of her legs. There were better ways to handle that without crossing into risque content. Nintendo has been doing that for decades at this point. Best case scenario, if you can use the black hole they tend to use when she goes flying, you can see up her dress like in Smash Bros. But it would have been easier just to keep her dress down and very few people would have been the wiser or even cared. One last bit before I get into it. I did skip over the Bowser scene that was after the obstacle course, but I wanted to keep all the video focused on Peach at that point. It also ties in with the breakneck pace, the constant scene changes, and let's face it, the visual and audio noise to distract people from the lackluster plot of this movie. Let's start with the camera flying into Bowser's flying island and keep. I don't have a problem with the scene at first, and unlike other scenes I've gone over, it uses music from a Mario game. Yes, that hard rock you hear is from a Mario game. It's no accident that I've been using Bowser's Fury gameplay for my B-roll footage. The music comes from that game whenever Bowser makes an appearance. Let me just play a bit of footage with the audio intact, then I'll play a bit of the scene as well. When it focuses on Bowser and he starts listing off all of his minions and says whatever those things are, I had to look that up. At this point, there have been so many it's hard to keep track or even remember. They're called spinies. With that out of the way, Bowser explains his motivations. The writers use the plot from Mario Odyssey or maybe even the 1980s anime where Bowser is trying to get Peach to marry him. When one of his Koopa Troopas asks what if she says no and Bowser turns into a dry bones, I kind of chuckled a bit. A part I have a bit of an issue with is when he says I will power up with the superstar and destroy the Mushroom Kingdom. Granted, he found the star to try and impress Peach with it. But considering the scene later in the movie with the bomber Bill, not to mention the beginning scene, where you see the sheer size of the island, along with the short duration of the Power Star, I kind of question this line. And part of the reason why I would change it to a Power Star instead of a Super Star. Bowser's island is so big, he could just land on the Mushroom Kingdom and crush it. The animators did what they did in previous scenes, and scaled the Bomber Bill up from the games. All they had to say was he would destroy the Mushroom Kingdom, and that would have worked. 
The other thing that caught my attention was when he says the power star is now ours, and I am now the most powerful turtle in the world. This raises some questions. I am now the most powerful turtle in the world! Are there other Koopas out there? If so, what forces are they able to muster? Was this just more poor writing, or maybe I'm just overthinking it again? Moving on, the next scene where the Shy Guys have Luigi tied up and they are dragging him into an airship. I don't really have a problem with this scene. I say I really don't because I've said it multiple times that I think they did Luigi dirty in this movie by not having him really do anything till the end and have him in a cage for half of the movie. It's called the Super Mario Bros. for a reason. Just stopping Bowser would have been more than enough. No need to rescue Peach, even if that is a staple in the Mario Brothers games. There was no need to swap Luigi out with Peach. The part I kind of question is the flashback where Luigi is being bullied and Mario came in to the rescue. I have to wonder if the other kid is Spike. I think it's him because of the glasses. It almost feels like a plot element that was left off the table. To be honest, this whole part can be taken out and nothing would be missed. I already covered Mario and Peach as they exited the castle, but I will get to Toad and the traveling montage later. Like I said, the movie bounces back and forth between characters a lot, and I want to focus on Bowser this time around. The next part kind of irritated me, but I guess kids liked it, and someone out there will say it was made for kids well yes but your argument is a poor one and is used often to excuse bad writing just because it's a kids movie does not mean it can't be well written with compelling characters have a consistent plot and internal logic there have been kids movies that have been entertaining to both kids and adults a lot of the golden age disney movies come to mind when this movie came to Blu-ray, I showed it to my parents after all they took me to the 1993 live action movie. They made a lot of comments and had plenty of questions in regards to why they didn't use sort of Mario canon because they played those games with my brothers and I when we were kids. The part that irritated me was when Bowser does his Peach song. I guess kids were singing it, but then again kids are dumb. I know I was a dumb kid once myself, now I'm just a dumb adult. But kids can't help it with the whole underdeveloped brain thing and all, so I can't blame them. The writers are another story. This is one of those moments that I mentioned back when Toad would have a line or a delivery that seemed off, as if it was done for the sake of the actor. This part feels like they did it because Jack Black is a musician and he also tends to do odd things for every character he plays. There is one YouTuber who said he liked the thought of Bowser learning to play the piano to impress Peach, but I don't think that is the case. The worst part is there is a bit of a bright spot that shines through when he plays the underground theme with Kemic. Sure, this whole scene was to show he is obsessed with Peach, petty, cruel, jealous, and quick to anger. It can be done without a song. Not to mention, this is where Bowser learns about Mario through Kimmick. But he learned it through some spies that were never mentioned or shown at this point. Or any point. I can think of one scene that can be taken away to make time or room for some spies to be introduced and then later report to Kemic or Bowser or both. Let's move on to Luigi being brought before Bowser. Again, I kind of have to question this scene because all they do is show that Bowser is cruel, petty, jealous, and easily angered. On top of that, to compound the whole thing with the spies and characters knowing things they should not, Bowser has a description of Mario and makes a connection to Luigi. The one thing that raised a red flag was when he said he would kill Luigi in front of Mario. Get him out of my sight! 
We'll see how tough this Mario is when he watches me kill his brother! So, Bowser is a villain, or a bad guy, but not that bad. Or at least, not in that way. It ties into that character assassination of other characters I mentioned in Part 5 with Peach. A line from a movie came to mind, and that was, I am a villain, not a monster. And when Bowser said he would kill Luigi, that crossed the line for me. After Bowser rips out part of Luigi's mustache and puts him in a cage with a bunch of other characters, you can see several of Bowser's minions in cages along with the penguins. I know there's a trope where villains intentionally are cruel and mean to their minions, kind of like when Bowser closed the piano lid on Kimmick's fingers, but I'd have to wonder why Bowser locked them up. But I guess it's irrelevant. The standout is the Luma that delivers some dark dialogue in a cheerful manner. The voice actor for the Luma is the director's child, so you have some full-on nepotism going on. The Luma was there just for the sake of making a reference to Super Mario Galaxy while having some dark humor. If it was taken out, nothing would be lost, but it's fine as is. Let's get to the part. How would I make this better? I kind of addressed part of this by not having Luigi captured and Toad teaching him how to survive in the world of the Mushroom Kingdom. Although I am still trying to come up with an idea how the star that I would have had in the Toad's possession get into Bowser's hands and to get Toad and Luigi to meet up with Mario and Peach. My initial idea at this time is to have Toad head to the Jungle Kingdom, as they call it in the movie, due to it being the closest place Bowser is not in control of or has a reduced presence due to Donkey Kong. Mario and Peach would be heading there to recruit Donkey Kong to help them fight Bowser since he is a threat to him as well. Kind of the enemy of my enemy is my friend thing. Which is the one thing that Peach's plan has going for her in the movie, but I'll touch on that next time. I would personally stick with the Motley Crew approach. As for Bowser, I would keep the scene with the rock music, but change up the dialogue involving the superstar. After the Koopa Troopa ask, what if she says no? I would have him say, when I find the superstar, she will say yes, or I will destroy the Mushroom Kingdom with it. Or something to that effect. Now, instead of Bowser singing about Peach, he would be checking on the progress of a new airship asking Kimmick if he found the star yet, and punishing him for not doing so. He would then say that they need the star to power his new ship, which is nothing new. Nintendo did that in Mario Galaxy, using the power stars as an energy source. It is getting a bit too close to the Death Star, but I was thinking more of an Ogrim's Hammer from the World of Warcraft, The Wrath of the Lich King. But I'd use Bowser's face for the barrel, and I would use propellers and not ballonets. Again, this is nothing new. There have been plenty of movies and games that use big guns on ships. It's about the presentation, not the idea. If I were to stick with some of the events in the movie, I would have combined the scene where Bowser's singing and when they brought Luigi in. This is mainly to cut back on the transitions, and because both scenes show the same thing, so why not just put them together? Or maybe just get rid of the singing scene altogether like I alluded to earlier. To cut back on the constant back and forth and to expand on other scenes or even this scene with Luigi. That's it for now. If you made it this far, thanks for watching.